Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. I want to talk about some more about the Jews and Judaism and anti-Semitism and Israel and a very important subject, Zionism. Zionism. Now, we know that if we say anything negative, if we criticize Israel, Judaism, or the Jews, we are considered anti-Semites. But I don't think that Zionism was included in that. So, I have not heard quite a lot about Zionism. Okay, It is mainly against Israel. It's mainly against maybe the Jews. But what is the bottom line? Okay, Now I know the bottom line is not Zionism because Zionism is only a group that is also controlled by another entity. That's just the way it is. Okay, We can talk about Israel. We can talk about the Jews. We can talk about Judaism. These things are being used. Especially, I think Judaism is being used, of course, then we say by Israel. But then we have to go deeper and say, well, it's really controlled by Zionism. Because who founded Israel? Israel was founded by Zionists. Okay, It's a Zionist movement that started during, uh, probably even before the First World War. And these Zionists were pushing very strongly, not only for the establishing of a country for the Jews, of which they said, right? A country for the Jews, which they say today as well. So Israel, they say, is only for Jews. So what other country do you know where they say, oh, this country is only for Muslims? I guess we have that, right? Um, but then again, if you say Jews, there's many different kinds of Jews. But Israel is not necessarily for all Jews. Israel is only for certain kinds of Jews. As we have seen in my last video, I posted this video about, and I hope you watched it, about this Rabbi Weiss who was protesting APAC, the APAC conference um, not too long ago. And he is definitely not one of these people that is being supported by the Israel government. Neither does he support the Israel government. So there are lots of groups that even live in Israel today, Orthodox, ultra-Orthodox Jews, that absolutely are against the state of Israel. And they say, no, what we do not agree with what Israel is doing today. Matter of fact, this guy even said, and I said in my last video, he said that Zionism has hijacked Judaism. He acknowledges that Zionism has influenced Judaism. And of course, Zionism has totally controlled Israel. So whatever Zionism thinks, that is what Judaism is supposed to think as, as well. But then again, there's resisting groups even within the Jews that do not support Israel. Now again, we know that Israel 
was founded by Zionists. Uh, very obvious, it's not conspiracy. We know for a fact that Zionist groups um, were instrumental in creating the State of Israel. We also know that the Zionists could have rescued a lot more Jews um, from, uh, during the Holocaust than what they did. So we know all these things that the Zionists only wanted the rich and the educated. It's definitely a fact. So they didn't want all the Jews in that country. It's a small country. I mean, how many people can they um, really get in that little country? So this is all facts that Zionism established Israel. Zionism, according to this rabbi, is influencing Judaism. Okay, They are saying what the Jews are going to believe. And I believe they have conditioned the Jews for a long time. The Jews all over the world and especially the United States. They have conditioned them to support Israel unconditionally. Not only that, but they also influenced many Christians to support Israel unconditionally. Why? Because they created this idea that the Jews are the chosen people. And that is absolutely a lie. Anybody who knows the Old and the New Testament knows that very well. That yes, God has chosen Israel. And Israel, not necessarily the Jews. I mean, the Jews had a plan within that as well, within Israel as well, to bring forth Messiah. And God accomplished that plan. But that was the only plan he had with Judah. Why? Because Judah and the rest of Israel broke the covenant. And so therefore, they are no longer God's people. They are no longer the Israel of God. The Israel of God are people that support God's plan and follow him. And God's plan was always, always from the time, uh, from the time of uh, Adam and Eve, his plan was to bring forth Messiah. And he even chose the Jews to do that. And he accomplished it without, without the Jews even deserving it. The Jews didn't deserve it. They committed idolatry long before Jesus came on the scene. And when he finally came, when finally Messiah came, this the seed of Abraham, when he finally came, they rejected him and killed him. Make no mistake, it wasn't the, the Romans. Don't blame the Romans. Okay? It was your doing. We know it. You did it. But God still loves you and he still wants you to accept your Messiah, you still have a, a choice to do that. You have always had a choice to accept Messiah. But the Jews didn't do it. Not even until today, 2,000 years later, almost 2,000 years later, they still haven't, has, I mean, they're still rejecting and, um, I mean, blaspheme. They blaspheme God. They still do. Because when you blaspheme Jesus, you blaspheme God. Because Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the creator coming to them, providing salvation for them. And they rejected that. So, it's kind of sad. It's very sad that they constantly get, get misled. And until and they go back and accept Messiah fully as their leader. 
instead of thinking that they are the chosen people, that they are better than everybody else, nothing is going to happen. I'm going to use today this example with、um, Rachel's children and Leah's children. We all know that story about Joseph being sold into、uh, slavery, and people use Joseph and the sons of Jacob in different ways. But there is one symbolism of ch- the children, you know, of Rachel and Leah, and one of them is that they are extremely symbolic for the Gentiles and. The Jews, okay, very symbolic. So then you're going to say, well, who in the world is a Rachel's children, and who in the world are symbolizing、um, Leah's children? Well, we know that Rachel had what two sons, right? She had Benjamin, and she had、um, Joseph.、And、Joseph was sold into slavery. The sons of Leah did not like Joseph. They did not like the sons of Rachel. I mean, of yeah, Rachel. And so, it took them a long, long time to repent of what they have done to Joseph. And Joseph wanted to see when they finally came to Egypt. For some grain, because of, there was a famine, he needed to see whether they still were hateful with him, and he noticed that they were no more hateful, and that they really have repented of what they have done to Joseph. Now, today we are living still in this time of this hatred of. Leah's children against Rachel's children, okay, which I believe are symbolic for the Jews and the Gentiles. And Paul says clearly, and I believe is in it's in Ephesians two eleven to twenty two. Said clearly that God or Jesus has come to put away. This hatred, this jealousy between the Jews and the Gentiles, but most of the Jews are still holding on to this hatred and this jealousy. They're still holding on to it. So, how in the world can they ever not be misled if they keep holding on to these things? When they finally realize that we are all children of God, that we are all children of Jacob, if we're believing, that is finally, hopefully, when the Jews understand that they don't have special privilege. But at this point, if they continue to hold on to this hatred and this Jealousy, they will be misled, and who is misleading them? It's Zionism. Now, is Zionism necessarily a Jewish movement? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it is using a lot of Jews、um, as a as front line people. Okay, and it looks very much like Zionism is a Jewish movement because it has a lot of Jews in there. Of course, it offered Jews a lot of bonuses in a sense. You know, getting your own country is a good bonus. Making them feel better about themselves is a good bonus, right? Uh, making them believe that they are special and they're God's special people gives them a bonus.、Um, making them think that they are smarter than everybody else, of course, gives them a bonus. 
making them believe that they have the religion, the best religion, and that they belong to the God, okay, the real God, um, is a special bonus. And I think all these things were used, were used to, should I say, accept or help the Jews to accept this Zionism, okay, the Zionism. Now, today we know that a lot of people really support Zionism. They're not even Jews. Look at our um, government officials. Um, again, I saw Mike Pence in the background of that video. Uh, I think he was a guest speaker at the APEX, APEC conference. We know that Pence is a devout Catholic. He calls himself evangelical, evangelical Catholic. Make no mistake, he is definitely a uh, Jesuit to the T. He was Jesuit educated and he's a Jesuit. Okay? So when we follow the thread further and further back, even if we do some research with Zionism, the question is, where does Zionism start? How far can we go back and where do we end when we talk about Zionism? Okay, Zionism, I don't think it's really a movement that came really out of the Jews. I really believe that the Jews were used think the Jews were used, unfortunately. And I say really unfortunately, and I really mean it. Um, they were misused. Why? Of course, they were oppressed and they wanted to have identity, just like the Germans, right? I mean, look how oppressed they were after the First World War, and Hitler gave them an identity and they followed him. So it happens all the time. Happens not just with the German people. Happens with all the rest of us. Okay, Americans, um, French, anybody. You squish somebody's identity long enough, somebody can step in and make you feel better about yourself again. And I believe that's what happened with Zionism. If you go further, uh, you know, far enough back with Zionism, I really believe that you end up with Jesuit. Jesuits who most likely started Zionism. Okay, and I don't want to go too deep into that today because I know there are re there's research done that shows that. So this whole thing about Israel, who is totally um, led by Zionism and by Zionists, and these Zionists, again, are led by something else. And all along they think it's all about the Jews. And all along they think it's all about Judaism. But in reality, it's not about the Jews. And it's not about Judaism. But it is really these people and this religion being used by some other entity that is hiding. And you guys know what I think about papacy. You know that I believe 100% that papacy is the beast system. And so it makes sense that all these additional little groups that the Jesuits um, founded are also working for papacy. And is be, they are being used to fool people. They are being used to create wars and tension. They're used to mislead people. And that is really the bottom line, and that's what really I am extremely worried about. 
I'm not just worried about the Christian's head being cut off. I'm also worried about the Jews again, the ordinary Jews, okay, again, being the victims of some kind of Holocaust. Yeah, the Jews, they can scream all they want. No, not again, not again. But again, who created this problem with the Jews in Germany? Who created it? Please, people, wake up. Wake up. Was it really um, Hitler and the German people who created this problem? Did they really create this problem? Do your research. Don't close your eyes because you feel guilty what happened and I know it was horrible. Nobody can convince me that it wasn't horrible. Matter of fact, that's why I feel bad because it was horrible and it happened in Germany. And that is the most horrible thing because Germans are not these horrible people. They are not these horrible people and yet it happened there. And it can happen again. It can happen again. Things like these can happen all over and in every country, including the United States. If we are not getting off our little um, behind and getting more active in getting this information out there and doing our research instead of just saying, Oh my goodness, the Noahide laws are running us over, blah, blah, blah. People, there is worse things behind. Worse. Okay? Noahide laws are nothing compared to all the stuff that is behind and all the conspiracy. I mean, real conspiracy. And I'm not talking about theory here. I'm talking about real things. is going on right now in our government. In our government, it has going on for a long, long time. No, it's not necessarily the Jews who are infiltrating into um, our government and our universities, and it has been happening for a long time. No, it's not necessarily the Jews. The Jews are being used. That's the bottom line. They're used because their little ego is being used. Okay, They're feeling good about these things, and so they're being used. They were, uh, the, you know, people give them little uh, bonuses and, and little things, you know, uh, stuff that makes them feel better. And, and they're little minions, little minions for these people that are running the world behind the scene. And it's not just Zionism. We don't even have to start with the Jews and Judaism. No, get a little bitty deeper. Who is affecting Judaism? That's what you need to look at. Who is affecting and has affected Judaism for a long time? Okay? And it's not just Zionism. Go a little further than Zionism. Who has affected all this? Israel is just um, a new country, really, in this world scene. This has been going on for a while, for a long time. And of course, Israel is totally run by Zionists. So, okay, we're going to have to look at Zionism. Not necessarily Israel, okay, but Zionism. And again, keep going further. Worse is Zionism getting its, um, what, uh, leadership from? Uh, because I know it's going to go deeper. You know, there's a rabbit hole. Follow the rabbit hole where it goes. You know, we're saying, oh, these uh, Zionists are, uh, you know, affecting um, Judaism. But are we talking about the Jesuits? How the Jesuits have been infiltrating our Christian, um, evangelical Christian, Protestant seminaries um, and have trained um, our doctrine, okay, how it affected our doctrine and how, our, and I have done videos on, on how our end times doctrine is so affected, you know, by um, these uh, Jesuits. So, yeah, I know. And I know the Jews don't want to hear that. 
Judaism doesn't want to hear that. And of course, Israel doesn't let you know that either because they are Jewish. Yeah, they're Jewish. Um, and, but they're not going to tell you who's really running things. No, because they're covering things up. So, I'm going to come up to an end today. Think about these things. Who is really behind things? And people stand up. Because if these things are infiltrating in our government, in our schools, universities, have been doing it for a while, we need to stop this. Okay? We need to stop this. We need to support people regardless of what faith they have when they speak out against APAC. Matter of fact, we need to speak out against APAC, but also understand APAC is not just Israel lobby. It's Zionist lobby, okay? It's Zionist lobby. And think where the Zionist, um, the Zionist idea are coming from. Anyways, if you have any comments, please leave your comments. I know people are afraid to talk about this. But you know what? I don't think they have addressed um, Zionism under um, anti-Semitism yet. Mm, so maybe we are safe to talk about just and Zionism instead of Judaism and, and, and Jews. And I can say that. I am not anti-Semitic because I know Judaism and um, and the Jews are being used right now. Again, being used again. And I just hope that we will not have another Holocaust. Because remember, when the Jews were in Germany, why did most Jews not leave Germany? Because they did not expect the Holocaust to happen. They did not expect that Hitler or Germany would go against them. Because Germany was supporting them. Okay, They were um, helping them to advance in Germany. Uh, the Jews were really welcome in Germany. That's why they could advance and get rich in Germany. And then all of a sudden, the German government goes against them. And think about why the German government or Hitler went against them. It was not the German people that went against um, the Jews. No, make no mistake. It was not the German people. Okay? We were shamed. We were shamed. We were shamed as a nation because it happened on our turf. But it wasn't the Germans' people's fault. Yes, there were Germans that were invo involved in it, but most Germans had no idea what even happened. Most Germans would have never, never, never um, support anything like that. In fact, I, I, you know, I know with my family um, that there was a person, a Jewish person that used to come to my family and we were very good friends. They were very good friends. I wasn't there, but they were really sad. Um, and they, you know, they felt really bad and, and wanted to know why this friend didn't come anymore. So I know, I know Germans are not to be blamed for this. Not at all. And so just wake up because I don't want this to happen again. And I see it. I see people again, uh, this, this development again, which can end, up, can end up pretty bad. And it's not the Christians getting their heads cut off. No, that's not what it is. I mean, that may happen too. But it's not just the Christians that are going to be persecuted if this continues like this. It's going to be maybe this guy, this Rabbi Weiss, okay, and his group that will be persecuted in Israel, okay, Israel. So, wake up, get some information, listen to these things, don't get stuck in fear, because that's the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer.
okay? You get paralyzed, you get uh, frozen, um, and you can't react and you can't think straight. So do not get um, caught in fear. Always let the Holy Spirit guide you. Always.